audio on the stream real quick, make sure we can actually hear it. Okay. Hi, my name is Brendan Donahue, and I'll be talking about Coco PGA. Yep, we're good. We're yeah. live. Okay. But do we want to let people know you're here speaking? Yeah, I heard that. Yeah, we, we made an announcement. Okay. It was really hard to hear what John Yeah, I know. I know. Okay. Well, a lot of action going on there. So. Anyway, as I said, I'm, my name is Brendan Donahue, and I'm what you might call the uh, logic designer. Um, of the COCA VGA project. So that means the majority of my contributions on this is uh, in the FPGA. Um, so today I'm going to be talking about uh, how I got the uh, COCA VGA 64 column text mode uh, working with basic. Uh, so you know, hopefully this will be interesting for folks who aren't really even necessarily interested in COCA VGA, but might be interested in uh, or curious about customizing basic for their own needs. All right, so what we're going to talk about uh, is, well, first, kind of a summary of Coco VGA, what it is and, and where we are with it, uh, including the status updates. And then uh, we'll actually spend most of our time talking about um, how to patch BASIC uh, to uh, achieve what we want here. All right, so under review, Coco VGA uh, is intended to enable 6847 based systems, including the you know, Coco 1 and 2, MC10 and Tano Dragon to output VGA. So it uses the 6847 um, digital uh, outputs and, uh, and, and generates VGA from that. It doesn't mess with the uh, analog outputs or anything. Uh, so this is a project uh, a friend of mine, uh, Steve Spiller, who lives in Washington State, and I started. Um, six years ago uh, and uh, in 2015 we asked Ed Snyder to help us with the uh, boards he's uh, not only produced some really nice boards for us but uh, he's also been writing some software some of the, for some of the enhanced uh, Coco VGA modes such as the VG616 color mode so uh, since Coco Fest 2017 um, so I've completed the 6K uh, 128 by 96 16 color mode. I had that working already um, for the most part at the end of uh, Coco Fest. There was some uh, minor bugs, so that's fixed. Uh, and since then I've added uh, a 2K uh, 64 by 32 column row, uh, 30, 32, sorry, 64 column by 32 row text and semi-graphics mode. Um, and uh, updated power, power, uh, color palette controls for some future enhancement that, that we have planned there. Um, so the to-do list is still about the same as it was six months ago. Uh, obviously these are the things that are not as sexy as the enhancements. So uh, <coughs> anyway, so we still have some things to do around getting T1 support, supporting systems other than the Coco 2, although I have fit this into a Tano Dragon and it works fine. Um, audio and you know some other FPGA enhancements. So the big announcement is that I finally have these available. So um, you know, come come see me if you uh, if you want to know. So many thanks to Ed Snyder for putting together you know this batch of, of boards and cables for us. Uh, it's pretty awesome. Um, <laughs> long last, right? <laughs> um, so yeah, so I've I've taken uh, I mentioned you know that this is really intended for a um, Coco two Rev B main board. Uh, it has a vertical uh, vertically oriented RF can in it. Um, you know if you bring by a, a Coco or you know pop the top on your Coco and send me a picture, I can help you identify whether it would fit in there or not. Um, and as I mentioned, it also works in a US uh, Tano Dragon. I um, I non destructively desoldered the 6847 and put a socket in and then plugged this into it and had VGA out. So that, that works as well. So, you know, in theory, this is electrically compatible with anything with the 6847 in it. It just may not be physically uh, compatible just because of the, you know, changes in board revs and where they, you know, put RF cans and large capacitors and things like that. Um, and, you know, as I had mentioned on the previous slide, you know, the, 
there's no there's no audio. So one of the one of the issues with Coco PGA today is that um, you know if you do away with the uh, the RF output and you're no longer using it, how are you going to get audio out of your Coco, right? So um, Ed has actually made available some uh, composite and audio mods that uh, that we can uh, I also have and I can also install. So here's an example of an early production board um, in my Coco 2. This is my daily driver Coco 2 that I have with me today. So, um, so in, in this situation, you know, I actually have it mounted, you know, with the five holes in the back that are necessary to actually install it. But there's no reason why you couldn't say run the ribbon cable out between your case halves or something like that. Okay, so moving on to 64 columns. So why 64 columns, you know, as opposed to something else, and why bother with, you know, a higher uh, text density and, and doing it in hardware? Well, so, you know, for one thing, you know, I, I always felt it would be better if we could offload the 6809 to do more useful work than, say, rendering text in the situations where we want more than 32 columns. So, you know, scrolling and redraw takes much more effort on the part of the 6809 uh, when operating graphics than uh, manipulating just a you know single byte per character. Um, and then given addressing and page size, 64 columns is much easier to implement uh, in the FPGA than 80 columns. Uh, so, and then last but not least, uh, doubling pixel density in both X and Y is ideal over say two and a half times for 80 columns. Uh, or by adding yet another character set or something like that. Um, so, but in general, this is a feature that I've always wanted for, um, you know, in the Coco 2, you know, for, for things like text-based games, um, you know, heavy-duty operating systems and programming. <clears throat> so to do this in it, its current form requires a 64K Coco. So we wouldn't be able to copy ROM to RAM, enter all RAM mode, and patch basic without this much memory. So we also need disk extended color basic, and that's you know, our, one of many other RS OSLX. Um, because you know, I'm actually just making assumptions about where graphics pages are placed in memory. You could do this with a cassette system if you wanted instead. Um, you would just have to change the constants. Uh, and of course, you need uh, a Coco VGA to interpret the uh, graphics data as ASCII with semi-graphics. <clears throat> okay, so initially I posted a, a video on YouTube with all of this working in the RG6 mode, so the top one there, uh, which is by far the most convenient uh, from a standpoint of you know addressing in the FPGA and uh, there's no repeated rows of data. Um, but unfortunately, that meant that if somebody wanted to actually use RG6 for graphics and you put the uh, put Coco VGA in this mode, you would now have to use one of those buttons on the back of the Coco to switch between text and graphics modes. And that's really not ideal. Um, also, the 64 column text mode is 64 by 32, which happens to be 2K bytes. Well, we don't, so we don't really need all 6K of what that top mode uh, generally allocates. Uh, so later I changed it to CG2, which is a 2K mode um, to match the, uh, the uh, uh, 64 column uh, memory requirement. And this is a little bit more challenging to do in the FPGA um, just because of the way the, the 6847, well, and SAM reads the rows of data and, and replicates them, and then I have to uncompress and store those in the uh, internal ping pong buffers. Um, so uh, the, the most significant software challenge here is to get basic to think that the text in semi-graphics uh, mode is CG2. Or you might even say P mode negative um, one. You know, of course you can't do a P mode negative one on a Coco. It'll give you a, a, a F C error, right? Because the negative one is out of range. But you know, if you you know, if you notice, right, I mean, 43210, negative one. Um, uh, and then the other thing to notice here is that 
The 6847 uh, GM pins are offset by three from the basic P mode. So I, I just point that out for some foreshadowing. We'll, we'll, you'll understand why I pointed that out here shortly. Okay, so we're about to slice up memory like this. So we're no longer going to be using the uh, hex 400 region that had the 32 column text and semi-graphics. And the reason for that is it's, it's just not big enough. It's hemmed in by uh, basic system RAM and disk system RAM. Um, and uh, I'll go ahead and place all my machine language routines up in, in higher memory. Um, I didn't, wasn't too careful. I could have moved it up a little bit more and, and wasted a little bit less space at the top. But to be honest, after we're done using these once, we could easily reclaim this memory. It's not, it's not needed for, you know, once, once you put the hardware in the correct mode and patch basic, you no longer need this stuff. Um, and then, uh, <clears throat> last but not least, we have the, the uh, uh, hex 8000 to DFF region with the uh, uh, extended color basic and color basic ROMs. And so what we need to do is we need to copy those in a RAM so we can hack them, hence the ROM to RAM copy routine. So at the last Cocoa Fest, I sort of described um, in great detail how we get Cocoa VGA to comprehend uh, mode and palette uh, change requests. So, um, you know, real briefly, uh, we're basically using the AGCSS and uh, AS pins as a combination lock. And that's during the vertical blanking region, and then we, that tells it that the next frame of video will be actually data registers that it should pay attention to. Um, so I have a small set with this Langley Irish routine that watches for this blanking region, this uh, SG4 PG2 bin. That routine um, uh, watches for the blanking region and programs the combo lock. Uh, and we're going to place it at 6C100, hence the. 6 BFF up there in the, in the clear. Uh, and then we're placing a uh, 512 byte region at 7,000 uh, hex, which is going to be read by the SAM as though it's video. And because Coco VGA is put in this mode, it will interpret that next, that page that's being set up right here as, um, as uh, data to stream into its registers. So this is basically what enables 64 column mode in Coco VGA. This one poke followed by calling the, uh, the machine language routine. So I'm sorry, I have a question. Yeah. So you're saying that's the program programming that you should add if you want to uh, access this capability. The 64 column mode. Yeah. This is this is what you need to tell tell Coco VGA to do okay. if you wanted it to interpret the CG2 video mode as text instead of graphics. Okay. Okay, and then what we're going to do is, uh, you know, this the graphics pages are um, one and a half K each, and we need two K. So we've got to allocate a minimum of two graphics pages in order to uh, have enough memory set aside at hex E100 for our, uh, for our uh, text pages that we need. So, and, and I mentioned E100, that's, that's specific to the disk system. Um, set system is a different spot. Okay, and then this is courtesy uh, Alan Huffman's website. So, um, what this, this machine language routine does is copy uh, ROM to upper RAM and switches the Cocoa into all RAM mode. Um, and someday I would like to disassemble and understand how that works, but for the time being I just lifted it for my purposes. Okay, so instead of me listing out all the pokes and all the other stuff that, that I had to do, um, I thought maybe instead I would take some code snippets out of uh, Color Basic Unraveled and Extended Color Basic Unraveled and uh, talk about what the, uh, you know, how, how well, what we need to do uh, with it in order to, to make it work in this way. So, um, 
So the part of the routine that's shown here, this is, uh, this is part of the screen command, the extended color basic screen command. So the part that's shown here is the high resolution graphics part. So this particular routine requires no edits, but I'm pointing it out to you because we are going to use it here momentarily. So <clears throat> you'll notice this uh, add three on the second line there, um, or sorry, third line. Um, so that harkens back to our, well, let's get rid of the three lowest resolution modes, right? And we'll have P mode zero through four. So that's where that, that offset comes from. So, well, gee, that, uh, that kind of gives me an idea. Um, what if I gave it a negative one and added three to it? So we'll, we'll come back to that. Um, so anyway, the other things that this does is it uh, um, uh, point, points the SAM to the start of the graphics page at hex D100. Um, it also sets up the appropriate addressing mode to match the VDG, and uh, uh, that's about it. That's, that's the important part there. Okay, so this is the part of the screen uh, stuff that we want to we want to edit. You can see my big red X. We don't need any of that stuff anymore. So <clears throat> what we want to do is, um, so this is basically the address to match up with up there. And then, you know, if you were poking this in at with basic, you'd poke at this address, you'd poke uh, D6 at 95AF, you'd po poke B6, et cetera, et cetera. Um, but basically what we're going to do is we're going to grab the P mode value uh, that that Basic has in its internal uh, scratch storage. We'll grab that out. Then we'll and, and put that in B. In A, we'll put a negative one FF, and we'll set program that in, back into over the top of the P mode that we just saved. Then we'll call that graphics routine that I had we just talked about on the previous slide. And so B will be safe on the stack and then restored. And then we can go ahead and put the people back in exactly the way it was. And so there won't be any need for, um, uh, for us to patch parts of, uh, of basic that, um, you know, that, that have people bounds checks or anything like that. We won't be leaving a negative one uh, laying around in P mode variable to confuse it. So it won't know except that we faked it out just for the purposes of setting up the modes. So then after that, I mean, we're 75% we're of the way there now. So <clears throat> we'd be done as long as we don't care to address the entire 2K of our new text video memory. But right now, Color Basic thinks we only want to address 512 bytes at hex 400. So to resolve that, we just need to fix up various constants uh, and addresses um, in you know, things like print configuration and scrolling, set reset, um, and a few others. Uh, so I'm, again, I'm highlighting in yellow the pokes that need to be made to, uh, to fix this up. And um, so you know, you'll see a lot of, a lot of changes of you know, this column mask changes from uh, 31 to 63, and 30 to 64, another 30 to 64, right, if you compare the, these, and then the, the start of the last line, E100 plus 1984. Okay, so here's the output of character. Um, so it needs to know where the new start of the screen is, where the start of the new line is, um, end of screen, start of screen. Print and CLS, this upgrades our print at, so we can now print up, print at up to 20, uh, 2047. So, uh, and we need to tell it where the end of the screen is so it knows what its bounds are. We need to tell CLS so it can clear the whole screen for us. Um, set and reset has address calculations in it. You know, it knows, you know, set and reset basically just use semi-graphics blocks. So it has these address calculations to figure out which, um, 
which character on the screen uh, is located where, and it needs to know how many you know horizontal and vertical blocks. So you know we're going from 64 to 128, 32 to 64, 32 to 64, and giving it the top of screen address. And last but not least, the lowly cassette status. You remember the blinking S's and F's at the top left corner of your screen? Well, they're still being put, you know, on the other screen, so let's move them so they appear at the top left corner of our new screen. Okay, so then we've done all our patches to extended color basic and color basic. So they're now, you know, they're in RAM. We fixed them all up. So to wrap this up, we want to go ahead and grab our cursor position. Because uh, we're about to do a CLS, which is going to change that on us anyway. Um, use our new screen zero command to set up the VDG in the right mode and the SAM in the right mode, so that now it's being put into the CG2 mode, right? <clears throat> and uh, then we'll issue a CLS, give ourselves a nice clean slate, and then restore our uh, our cursor. And, uh, and then just, you know, kind of a, a nicety, you know, show the user kind of where they left off when they ran this program so they can, you know, see the text. So this just copies uh, the text from address 400 up to address 300, uh, E100 and leaves you there in, right? You can now program, you can load a new program, you can do whatever you want. So, um, Anyway, so there's, a, there's an example screenshot, um, but if you guys are interested, I can, uh, I can fire up the cocoa and, and demonstrate that. Yeah? Okay. Fire it up. <laughs> Fire and brimstone.
But anyway, I think uh, I think that's actually it. So um, thank you, uh, thank you everybody for coming. And uh, you know, if you have questions for me, uh, I'll be happy to take them. And uh, otherwise, um, you know, uh, you know, hopefully, you know, it'll encourage you to, to hack basic because uh, it's yeah. it's pretty easy. I mean, I'm no I'm no assembly language or 6809 guru, and uh, the the unravel books make it very easy. Yeah. Uh, is it possible um, like programmatically to determine whether the machine has the the, the 64 the, the Copa VGA installed? So you, when it starts up, you say if I'm if I have the capability, go into 64K or 64 mode or OS data. Unfortunately, today no. Um, there's no way to to kind of reach out there and ask it. So uh, this is something that I've been kind of pondering: is how you know how do you how do you write a game and have it automatically use some of these added features or something? Um, and right now, the only way I can think of is to ask the user. <laughs> so, well, so yeah, that's kind of that works. Yeah, do you have a Coco VGA installed? Yeah, that kind of thing. So, any other questions? So, you said that um, uh, so you were saying that the current board uh, is specific to, to a certain physical layout. Are yeah. There other boards in the works. Yeah, uh, Ed is actually contemplating other board form factors for, uh, for other machines. Now, you know, it's possible that this board would fit in some types of Coco ones, depending on the, the uh, board rev, but I, you know, probably need to take a look and we definitely just give it a try. Anybody else? Do you take checks? <laughs> yeah, and I actually, my, as I was running out the door, uh, yesterday morning, my wife said, here, take my square. So I take credit cards. So let me know. What, what cost? It's $95 for Coco VGA. If you want a composite board with it, so you can get your audio out, that's another $25. Right. Can they be installed here if somebody wanted them to put in? I, can, uh, I have my tools with me, so yes. That's a nice feature. Yeah. Will it fit in any of the Coco 2s or specific revs? Or specific revs of the Coco 2 board. So there are other versions of the Coco 2 where the uh, the mod video modulator is located elsewhere on the board. It's actually on the other side of the 6847 and mounted flat to the board instead of vertically. And unfortunately for that one, we need a different, uh, a different form factor. So is there only two revs to worry about then? Well, there's another one <laughs> that has a, uh, a 6847T1 in it, which is um, an enhanced version, slightly enhanced version of the 6847. That one actually has a different pinout. So for that one, I'm going to have to spend a lot more time with the FPGA to figure out how to make that one work. So what I would recommend, if you like one of these, is to you know open up your case, take a picture, and send it to me, okay. and then we'll figure it out. Yeah. Yep. So you just can't know why the Yeah. There, it's not not so when I say Rev B main board, not to be confused with Rev B Rev two Rev B Coco two. They're they're independent. So the Rev B main board actually has Rev B stamped on the main board, and that doesn't necessarily mean that it's a Rev B Coco 2. So, so the best thing would just be take pictures. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So, yep. so, so you, you can't tell just by is if the uh, uh, modulator is horizontal or vertical. I think you can, but I've, I haven't seen any exceptions to that yet. But in case there is, it would be good if we could take a look first. What is the distribution of the various revs? Like, is, is that the most common of the Mod 2 board? I don't actually know. Um, it, it, this just happened to be the, when, when I started working with Ed Snyder and he started making these boards, he said, what, what's your cocoa that you want to put this into? And I said, well, I have a Rev B board right here and it works good. Okay, we'll do that one. So it was arbitrarily chosen. But, uh, you know, at some point, we'll get some of these others uh, set up. Right. Any other questions? All right. Thanks, everybody.
Okay, nice, nice. And if it turns out I have two or three Coco twos, and turns out I don't have the right one, then I'll find the right one. Right. And yeah, eBay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Well, I'm right. going to kill me sooner or later. But <laughs> <laughs> All right, great. Thank you.